Hi, my name is Bonnie Perdue, and I am currently the chair of the psychology department here at Agnes Scott, as well as the co-director of our neuroscience program. And I have been at Agnes Scott since 2013, and I'm very excited to be part of two of our biggest majors on campus, both psychology and neuroscience, and that also taps into my background, which was studying cognitive neuroscience and how people think, and then trying to get a better understanding of how the brain underlies behavior and cognition. So there are lots of things that I think make being a psychology major at Agnes Scott or a neuroscience major at Agnes Scott really a special experience. And the first is that you will get to do these really important hands-on experiences where you do some sort of internship or some sort of research experience, and it's tied into your ongoing education. So it's not something that you have to go seek out separately necessarily. It's something that's built into what we want you to gain while you're here. We also have a great community. So we really try to build relationships between, not only between the students, but between the faculty and the students as well, so that we get to know each other kind of inside and outside of the classroom and can really help you to develop on whatever path you end up on. And then finally, I would say you're going to come out of Agnes Scott with a really rigorous, background in the material so that you are well prepared for whatever it is you do next. And you'll also come out with a lot of breadth, not only within psychology, but then of course, coming from the broader liberal arts perspective, you will graduate with the major, um, but you can do so many things with it because you've got such a broad foundation from your time at Agnes Scott. What's my favorite class to teach? I think that I would say all of them, but I'll try to choose one. Um, and that's probably animal behavior. And I, in my own research, have worked with a lot of different animal species. So I've done work at Zoo Atlanta, and I've worked with the giant pandas and the otters and the elephants and a lot of different animals. And so I take that experience and sort of bring it into the classroom where I teach um, students about animal behavior with all of those experiences in mind. But then I also get to learn a lot from the students because people bring in all kinds of experiences that they have had. And so it's just a really fun class to take. It's a 200 level course that will satisfy major requirements for psychology and for neuroscience. And so it's a lot of fun to teach. It's a lot of fun to have the students in there. Um, so definitely one that I would recommend. And then I should also say um, any kind of stats and methods because they really are so important um, to your development. And so I like trying to teach those in a way that will hopefully get you excited, but even more importantly, have you well prepared for whatever you do after Agnes. So we are really focused on making sure that all of our students get some sort of research or internship experience. So it is actually built into our capstone process. So if you are a psychology major at Agnes Scott, you'll actually take a planning course that helps you to look at different career paths, develop some of the materials that you'll need to start moving forward in a career. And then you'll actually do some sort of internship or supervised research experience. And so we have students do at least one. Every student will complete at least one of those for their capstone, but we actually have a lot of students who do many of them. So students might do an internship one semester, they might do a research lab the next semester, and so it's a really great way to try out different potential career paths before you make that kind of final decision. But we also have a really engaged department. We do a lot of activities, we have two big clubs that students can be a part of that the faculty are also engaged with. So we have our psychology and neuroscience club, and then we have our honor society. So for psychology, we have psychi, and then for neuroscience, there's neuroci. And both of these opportunities, either the psych and neuro club or the honor societies allow you to work with faculty to plan events and come up with activities for the department to engage in. And so you really get to know your professors both in the classroom, but then also outside of the classroom in these other kinds of ways. We really try to emphasize interactive learning 
in all of our courses, but you'll find that in some of the intro level courses, they're larger. And so you might be doing group activities and sort of breaking out into smaller groups and working on a project or some sort of problem where you're trying to come up with the solution together. Um, and then as you move through the major, once you get, for example, to the capstone level, you'll be in a smaller class where you have really one-on-one -on -one interactions with your faculty members trying to develop project ideas and collect data and that kind of thing. But across the board, no matter what level you're taking, it's not going to be a strictly lecture-based, you just sit there and hear the professor talk. We all try to incorporate different teaching techniques and strategies into our classes. And so we are always changing things and updating them based on what the psychology research says helps to make a better learning environment. We will adapt and change our teaching strategies to try to make sure that we are doing sort of the cutting edge research-based practice in the classroom. And so it's always gonna look a little bit different, but it's definitely geared towards engaging the students in a much more one-on-one um, -on -one and direct manner than just lecturing. So psychology itself is in a lot of ways built on different disciplines. So it's bringing together a lot of different perspectives to try to understand what I think is one of the hardest things to understand out there. And that's why people do what they do and why we act the way we do. And so in, a, in and of itself, psychology is very multidisciplinary. So it brings in perspectives from so many different areas. And so I think that gets magnified at a liberal arts college where you can not only think about all of the different approaches within psychology, but also how many different courses, many different experiences, many different disciplines can inform you as an individual who's learning about this material. And so very often, you know, you'll hear someone say, oh, in my history class, I learned about this and I can see how that relates to what we're talking about in psychology. Or in my biology class, I learned about this. And, you know, you just see it over and over again where there are all of these ties to what we learn about in the classroom because by getting a liberal arts education you're really being you're able to see the bigger picture and so that ties really nicely to psychology and then to the point of being a women's college we are again we try to follow sort of the research that outlines what are some of the best ways to help all members of society to really thrive and what are some of the barriers that are in place to that happening and then how can we do things in the classroom to help remove those barriers and really elevate everyone, um, whatever it is. If there are other marginalized identities that people might have that you feel like are going to potentially from a societal view, you know, be something that might hold you back, how can we break that down? How can we better understand it? How can we give you tools so that you can really elevate above that? We also are really invested in making sure that our students get research experience, which includes not only doing the research, but also presenting or sharing the research. And so we have students present work at our Agnes Scott conference, which is the spring annual research conference that happens every spring, but we also will take students to regional or national conferences where they can present their work either in a poster or a presentation, and we'll be there to kind of help through that process. And so you come out of Agnes Scott oftentimes with one or two or more presentations that have been done at conferences with your faculty member, as well as in some cases, um, actual publications. And so that's a big part of our mentorship as well is trying to make sure that you get those experiences that will help you with whatever comes next. So our students go on to do a wide range of things after they graduate from Agnes Scott. So we have many students who are interested in research and go on to graduate programs where they might earn a PhD or they might earn a master's degree and then follow a career that is focused on research. 
We also have many students who are interested in clinical or counseling, and so they will pursue a pathway that leads them to either work as a school counselor or a ma marriage and family therapist or all sorts of things in that domain. But then we even have students who will take the path of IO psychology, for example, which is where you learn how to contribute to the workforce as a psychologist. And so you would oftentimes work for a business, but in the role of an IO psychologist. And so it's the psychology of the workforce. So we have students go into all of those different directions after they graduate. Um, it's a really wonderful major to set a foundation for a lot of different things. And so a lot of people come in and they're interested in psychology and they think they want to do one thing within psychology, but then they end up going into a different direction. But they have that really strong foundation when making those decisions.